Okay, in this video, we're going to uh, quickly fill in the whole unit circle here. We'll talk a little bit about um, why we're doing some of the tips and tricks we're doing. But if you want to know um, all the details, check out the next video uh, in this series where we go through this whole thing and we talk about all the details. We go through it a little more slowly um, and we talk about a, a lot of tips and tricks. So we'll do um, some tips and tricks here, but in the next video, we'll talk about more. Okay, some of the same tips and tricks and we'll talk about more also and we'll explain them in more detail so it might make it easier for you to remember although that video is a bit longer but if you're looking for something shorter and quicker um, then this video uh, would probably be more suited for you anyway if you want a copy of this worksheet so you can follow along uh, check out the video description for this uh, check out the description for this video um, there will be a link so you can click that link um, open up this worksheet and print it out if you want Okay, so anyway, uh, unit circle. So the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared equals one. Uh, so that means the unit circle has radius one, okay, and center zero, zero at the origin, okay. So, uh, so here's zero, zero, the origin. So we can extend this. So this here is our x-axis, okay. That's our x-axis. And this here is our y-axis, okay. So that's our y-axis. Okay, so x-axis, y-axis. So now, um, since it's a unit circle, radius one, center zero, zero, what are the coordinates of this point? One comma zero. Okay, so that's really just a pre-calculus thing, knowing, um, knowing about how graphs work, things like that. So that's one comma zero. Uh, this, let's zoom into these a little bit. Uh, this guy up here is zero comma one. Okay, this point is zero comma one. What about this point? Negative one comma zero. This is zero comma negative one, okay? So those, uh, we really ought to have those memorized, but we don't really even have to memorize them. We could just think, oh, well, hey, unit circle. I know the equation of the unit circle. Definitely know that. Okay, definitely want to know that. Um, since x squared plus y squared equals one, that means the radius is one, the center is zero, zero. Well, hey, that means this has to be one comma zero, okay? Um, this has to be zero comma one, and so on. Okay, so that's some of the points. What about the angles? Um, well, I know, okay, angle uh, zero would just be right here. Okay, here's an angle zero. What if I go all the way around full circle? If I go all the way around full circle, uh, that's going to be two pi radians, right? So remember, two pi radians is one full circle. So if I go all the way around, I'm back at two pi. Okay. What if I go halfway around? Well, if two pi is one full revolution, then one half revolution halfway around would be pi, right? So this guy is pi, okay? Um, what if I go half of that? Well, if uh, pi puts me over here, if I go half of that, I'm going to be up here. Half of pi is pi over two, okay? All right, uh, what if I go half of that? Well, if I go half of this, so let's uh, put this here. So if I go half of this, um, well, if I'm starting over here, remember starting over here, if I go half of this, that's gonna put me over here, okay? Because this right here that I'm drawing right here, this is half, okay, this is half of this. Okay, pi over two, half of that. What's half of pi over two? Uh, one half one half of pi over two, uh, that's pi over four, right? Pi over four. Okay, so this, um, this is where our angle pi over four goes right here. So this angle is pi over four, okay? So that's um, one helpful way to remember pi over four. Okay, so pi over four, pi over two, here's pi. What's this guy? So let's zoom out a bit. This is one pi over two. This is two pi over two, right? This right here is two pi over two. What if I go one more pi over two? That's three pi over two. Okay. okay, so if I start here's zero, I go one pi over two, I'm over here. I go two pi over two, I'm over here. If I go three pi over two, I'm over here, okay? If I go four pi over two, I'm back at two pi. Four pi over two is two pi. Okay, but this is one pi over two, two pi over two, three pi over two. So that's why this guy is three pi over two, okay? Okay, now what about the rest of these guys here? Okay, so what we really should keep in mind, what we really want to remember is that in the first quadrant, what do we have? We have pi over 3, uh, pi over 4, and we also have pi over 6, okay? Which one goes where? Well, we already established that pi over 4 goes here, but another way to remember that is, okay, if I start at pi over 2, if I go this way, the denominators get larger. Pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 6, okay? So pi over 2, and then uh, if I go this way, the denominators become larger. 2, 3, 4, 6. See, the denominators are getting larger there, okay? So that's great. That's a good way to remember where these go here. Okay, now that we have that, how do we fill in the rest of these angles? So now let's zoom out a little bit and do this. Okay, so let me start with the uh, threes. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to write, okay, pi over 3, uh, 2 pi over 3, 
3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, 6 pi over 3, and I'm going to stop at 6 pi over 3. Why am I stopping at 6 pi over 3? Because 6 pi over 3 equals 2 pi. Okay. 6 pi over 3 equals 2 pi. 6 pi over 3 equals 2 pi, and 2 pi is here. I don't want to go beyond that, okay, so I just want to stop there. Okay. So what did I do here? 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4, 5, 6. See the pattern there? So that's what I'm doing here. Now, what do I want to do now? What I want to do is cross off all the ones I can simplify. Pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, I can simplify that. Cross it off. 4, 5, 6 pi over 3, I can simplify that. Cross it off. What am I left with? Pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. These are my special angles on the unit circle, something pi over 3. Okay? Pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. Where do they go? Well, pi over 3 is already labeled. It's right here. Okay? So 2 pi over 3 is the next one. Okay? Since pi over 3 is right here next to pi over 2, 2 pi over 3 is this next one right here. Okay? 2 pi over 3 is that next one right there. Okay, next to pi over 2. Uh, likewise, uh, the next one, 4 pi over 3, is going to be over here. Here's 4 pi over 3, okay, right next to 3 pi over 2. And then likewise, 5 pi over 3 is right next to 3 pi over 2 on the other side. Okay. So again, remember when we said uh, pi over 2 go this way, the denominators get larger? So 2, 3, 4, 6. Well, the same thing is true the other way. 2, 3, this will be something over 4, something over 6. Same thing down here. 2, go this way. Uh, this is something over 3. This is 4 pi over 3, okay? Keep going, we'll have something over 4, something over 6. Same thing over here, go this way. Here's 2, 3, we'll have something over 4, something over 6, okay? Now, what are they? Um, let's zoom back out. Let's do the same exact thing, but let's do it with the angles over 4, okay? So we're going to list all those out, and we're going to stop at 2 pi again. Okay, so this is going to be uh, pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, uh, 4 pi over 4, uh, 5 pi over 4, uh, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and um, 8 pi over 4. And 8 pi over 4 is the same thing as 2 pi, so we stop there. Okay, now again, we cross off the ones that we can simplify. Pi over 4. 2 pi over 4, we can simplify that. That reduces to pi over 2. No. 4 pi over 4 simplifies to pi. Cross it off. Uh, no, 6 pi over 4 simplifies to 3 pi over 2, cross it off. 7 pi over 4 cannot be reduced. 8 pi over 4 can be reduced, cross it off. What are we left with? We're left with our special angles on the unit circle over 4. Where do they go? Well, pi over 4 is already labeled. 3 pi over 4 is the next one. Okay, since pi over 4 cuts this quadrant in half like that, 3 pi over 4 cuts... 3 pi over 4 is the next one. It's going to cut this quadrant in half, okay? So here's 3 pi over 4. Uh, I noticed 2, 3, 4, 6, 2, 3, 4, okay? 3 pi over 4. What's the next one? 5 pi over 4. It's going to cut this quadrant in half. So here's 5 pi over 4. And then 7 pi over 4 is the next one. Cuts this quadrant in half. So here's 7 pi over 4, okay? Okay, so we have that. Now the only thing left is the uh, angles over 6. So we have pi over 6. So now we're going to do the exact same thing, but with the angles over 6. Okay, so now uh, let's list those out. So that's going to be uh, pi over 6, 2 pi over 6. So bear with me, there are going to be uh, 12 of them, 3 pi over 6. But seeing this, uh, especially seeing this one, is really going to help establish the pattern here. 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6. Guess what's next? 10 pi over 6. Surprise. 11 pi over 6, and finally 12 pi over 6. And again, stop at 12 pi over 6 because that equals 2 pi. So stop at 2 pi because that means we've gone one full revolution. We don't want to go beyond that. So stop there. Okay. Now again, uh, just like before, we cross off the ones that we can simplify. No, yes, we can simplify, cross it off. We can simplify, cross it off. 4 pi over 6, cross it off. 5 pi over 6 cannot be simplified. This one, 6 pi over 6, can be simplified. 7 pi over 6 cannot. 8 pi over 6 can. 9 pi over 6, it can. 10 pi over 6, it can. 11 pi over 6 cannot. 12 pi over 6 can. What are we left with? We're left with our special angles on the unit circle over 6. Okay? Where do they go? Well, there's really, there uh, isn't anything left. But anyway, um, since pi over 6 here, so angles over 6, uh, over 6, okay, angles over 6 
our closest. So I lost my caps lock, I guess. Angles over six are closest to the x-axis. Okay, so angles over six are closest to the x-axis. Pi over six is closest to the x-axis. It's closer than pi over four and pi over three. Pi over six is right by the x-axis here. So five pi over six is the next one. Okay, five pi over six is the next one. So it's gonna be this guy right here. That's five pi over six. Let's write that down. So this here is uh, five pi over six, okay? This next one, seven pi over six is the next one. It's this guy closest to the x-axis. So that's seven pi over six. Um, and then the last one is 11 pi over six, this guy right here, okay? Okay, well, hey, notice pi over six closest to the x-axis, five pi over six, seven pi over six, 11 pi over six. They're all the angles closest to the x-axis in each of their own quadrants, right? And notice also uh, two, three, four, six, two, three, four, six. 2, 3, 4, 6, 2, 3, 4, 6. The denominators get larger as we move away from pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Okay? So there's some tips and tricks to remember that. Now what about the coordinates of the points? So we'll go through that kind of quickly too. And again, we'll talk about it in more detail in the next video, but what we're doing here... Okay, so some more stuff that we do want to keep in mind. Remember that the coordinates here, they're all something over 2. Okay, it's all something over 2 all something over 2. What are they over 2? Well, remember these. Um, what we want to also keep in mind is root 1, root 2, and root 3. Okay, square root 3. Okay, so let's zoom out just a bit. So root 1, root 2, root 3. So these numbers make up the numerators here. How do they make up the numerators? Well, root 1, root 2, root 3, um, root 1 is smaller than both of these, root 2 is smaller than root 3, so these are organized from smallest to largest. As you move from left to right, as you move from left to right, the x-coordinates get larger. Okay, So this one is going to be root 1, but root 1 is just 1, so let's just write 1. This guy is root 2, this guy is root 3. Okay, Again, root 1, root 2, root 3, remember that, but root 1 is just the same thing as 1. Okay, So when we label it, we'll just label it 1. Okay. Um, so root 1, root 2, root 3. As you go from left to right, the x-coordinates get larger. As you go from uh, bottom to top, as you move up, the y-coordinates get larger. So this guy is going to be root 1, or just 1, okay, just 1. Uh, this guy is root 2. This guy is root 3. So remember, move left to right, the x-coordinates get larger. So that's why they're organized like this, 1, root 2, root 3. As you move from bottom to top, as you move upwards, the y-coordinates get larger. So that's why this is 1, root 2, root 3, okay? Okay. Um, now, how about these other points here? Well, notice since this is just a circle, we have some pretty awesome symmetry going on here. So these two points right here, they're symmetric over the y-axis. Okay? If, um, so if you have two points that are reflections over the y-axis, they have the same y-coordinate, but the x-coordinate is just a negative. Okay? So since this is positive 1 half comma root 3 over 2, this guy is negative 1 half root 3 over 2 because these points are reflections of each other over the y-axis, and if you reflect over the y-axis, you multiply x by negative 1, but y stays the same. Okay, so same y-coordinate, x becomes negative. Okay, same exact thing happens over here. So this point is negative root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2. And again, we'll talk about that in the next video in a little more detail, um, and we'll do it more slowly too, but this is root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. So this guy, the reflection, okay, this point is the reflection of this point, so this point is going to be negative root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. Okay. Now we can use this concept to fill in the rest of the unit circle also. So um, if we reflect over the y-axis, the y-coordinate stays the same. The x-coordinate gets multiplied by negative 1. What if we reflect over the x-axis now? If we reflect over the x-axis, the x-coordinate stays the same. So this x-coordinate is negative root 3 over 2. What happens to the y-coordinate? The y-coordinate gets multiplied by negative 1. So since this is positive 1 half y-coordinate, this guy is negative 1 half y-coordinate. Okay, so that's negative 1 half. Okay, so negative root 3 over 2, negative 1 half. How about this guy? Same x-coordinate as uh, this guy up here. So negative root 2 over 2. But the y-coordinate now gets multiplied by uh, negative 1. Okay, so root positive root 2 over 2 up here. This point is the reflection over the x-axis um, of that point. So this point has a y-coordinate negative root 2 over 2. Okay. Likewise, this is negative 1 half comma root 3 over 2. So this point, the reflection of that point, is negative 1 half comma negative root 3 over 2. 
And last but not least, this point here. So we, uh, these points, we can think of these as reflections of these over the y-axis or reflections of these over the x-axis. But either way, um, these two points are reflections over the y-axis. So uh, this becomes positive one half, and the y-coordinate stays the same. Okay. Um, how about this here? These two points are reflections over the uh, y-axis. So the x-coordinate becomes positive root 2 over 2 and the y-coordinate stays the same. Lastly, these two points are reflections over the y-axis, so the x-coordinate gets multiplied by negative 1, which means uh, it becomes positive, so we have root 3 over 2. And then the uh, y-coordinate stays the same, negative 1 half. And that's the entire unit circle. Okay, so notice uh, all the angles are filled in, um, all the points are filled in, so we went through it kind of quickly, but again, um, more details and a little more slowly in the next video, although it is longer, but if you need to see more of the details, check that video out. So that's completely filling in a unit circle with some of the tips and tricks. More tips and tricks in the next video also.